Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indisciplined Mind podcast for Saturday, January 13th, 2016. Sierra is still missing. It's a cold one here today, folks. Uh, The wife's phone said zero. My phone said four. A little while ago. Now it's it's crept up to five. Oh man, it is brutal. And since it's kind of feeling like the Great White North today, I thought I'd talk about one of the unique advantages to living in this area. You know, Michigan has got pretty much the only claim to the fact that we can go east and end up in another country that is typically thought of as our northern neighbor and that is Canada and I've been to Canada many many times over the years it's been quite a while Uh, it'd it'd be fun to go back and the wife and I Honeymooned in Toronto. Toronto is about five hours east of here. It's about the same drive as, you know, same time driving as as Chicago, really. It's about five hours. It is the most boring trip because it's just flat and there's nothing there. They even routed the road. I think it's the A101. I forget. Uh, but they've routed that so that it doesn't go really near the towns. If you want to go to a town, you have to get off and exit, and then usually there's a two or three mile drive. So you really just drive through farmland the entire time, and it's flat. And you don't even have cows to look at. There's just, just fields and green and whatever. So, yeah, we, we, we honeymoon there, and we used to go there fairly frequently for a while. It was one of our favorite vacation spots, and it has probably been at least 15 years since we've been there. So we really need to put that on the on the trip list. Uh, so, and then it got interesting because for a while there, I worked for a couple software firms. And we would go do consulting gigs, and then we had some Canadian customers. And, and that was a little bit different because you had to be careful about, you know, what you said to, what, what, what you said to them because at, at the border because they, had, they were kind of really suspicious of people that were coming in to do training for some reason. And we were, weren't allowed to, to have training materials with us at the border. So if we had a book or something that we were going to be passing out as part of our training, we had to make sure that we shipped those ahead of time. Because it was okay to ship it into the country, but for some reason you couldn't have it in your car and drive it across the border. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's you know some customs thing, and I never got into all that. Probably the most exciting story I had was... Um, and this might have been post 9 11. I'm not sure. But me and another fellow from my company were going into Canada. Um, we drove separately, but we were going to the same place. And I get the customs and I explain what I'm there for. And he's like, oh, you need to go into that building. There, and uh, so so my coworker, I saw his van. He had this big van, and it was, it, you know, I recognized it. It was already sitting there in the parking lot for this little side building. So you know, I park and I get in, and there's like this big, you know, lobby space, and then off to the left there was a set of gliding slash doors, and then there's all these, all these. Uh, you know, like bank teller windows kind of thing uh, in, in a row there and some seats that sit along this glass wall where the doors were. So, you know, I walk in there 
And the problem was I had all the paperwork for what, what it was we were doing. So I could tell this guy was probably grilling Michael a little bit. Or that was my co-worker's name, Michael. I could tell he was grilling him a little bit because he looked kind of nervous, you know. And I had all the paperwork, you know. So I got in there and I showed up and, you know, and I get my passport. And I said, okay, here's the paperwork for us. And, you know, this guy behind the, behind the counter goes... Tippity tap. It was just the three of us in this room. I mean, there's nobody else. Uh, he's tippity tapping on the computer and looking at stuff, and he kind of looks at me and he looks at the computer, and he turns to my coworker and says, "Can you step out for a minute?" And so he's like, uh, "Okay." So he steps out and goes into that outer lobby area. So now it says him and I, and he starts grilling me about when have I entered the country from St. John's Island. And I'm like, um, you know, enter Canada from St. John's Island. And I'm like, uh, you know, because at this point you're on, I, I, I think we were going across, I think we were in Sarnia. So that's on the other side of the, there's this town north just below the thumb called Port Huron. And there was a bridge there, and that's, I believe, where we were where we were at. So by the time you hit the customs office, you're on Canadian soil already. You know, so he's 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 grilling me about, you know, when did I enter the country from St. John's Island? And I'm like, I, I I've never heard of St. John's Island. I couldn't tell you where St. John's Island is. And and I'm trying to just say, well, I never. I don't even know of that place. And this went on for two or three minutes, and I'm already feeling like I'm going to be visiting the inside of a Canadian jail. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he like tippy taps on the computer again and goes, Oh, okay, that wasn't you. You know, and from that point, we're okay. <laughs> we get through there. We get through there, and you know, we, we go upon our merry way, and I don't have to, uh, you know, worry about sharing sharing a cell with somebody. But it was just it was so weird. I don't, you know, and, and I, I, to this day, I'm not really sure if the guy was just trying to pull my chain. I, I think that's probably likely. They probably had a certain closed circuit TV on me, on me and they're probably going to watch the tape later and laugh at my shocked and scared expression as I envision being in a Canadian jail. Now, obviously being in a Canadian jail is not like you know being in a you know third world jail but still I was sitting there going oh crap what am I going to do if these guys decide to detain me what's going to happen now <laughs> all these thoughts were flitting through my brain that's probably the closest I've ever come to being arrested, I think. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, most of the time it's been fine. I mean, I've been through the border many, many, many times. It's been a while. It's, it's, I, like I say, I haven't done it in quite a while. It used to be very, very simple, uh, pre-9-11. I mean, you just needed, um, you just needed your driver's license. I and mean, they didn't grow you too badly most of the time. Now, I think you either have to have your passport or you got to get some special uh, Canada immigration thing. Or it's, it's like a it's like your driver's license, but it's, it's more like a passport than a driver's license. But it's something I think meant specifically for the Canadian border or maybe it might even be for Mexican, but for people that do it all the time. I don't know. I didn't get that. I got a passport. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, so I thought I'd share that. It is a nice place. I mean, I, I've, I've shared, I've shared. Um, I think the time we went to uh, the Montreal area and we were suddenly in, in France, you know, it felt like. But you know, Canada is nice. The times I've been there, I've enjoyed it. It gives you a little bit of the feel of going to another country. It is. In some of the places, like when you get, if you go, the places that are closest to the border, you know, they, they feel quite a bit. You know, they're, they're cities, and they, they don't feel much different. But you, know, you get a little deeper, and yeah, you know, they got different they got different chains going there. In some cases, you know, they still got McDonald's and things like that. But 
you know, you're more likely to find find a Tim Hortons and a Starbucks, uh, you know, th- things of that nature. So that's what I thought I'd talk about today. Nothing too uh, too brain numbing here on a Saturday morning. But I am here at the grocery store, so I think it's time to end this podcast. I will be back on Monday, and I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.